Oh, tarpon, tarpon. <laughs> oh my gosh, that came out of nowhere. Oh, we got him, got him, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was incredible. All right, got me and Matt and the Yak, eight rods in the back of the truck. And we're coming back from the Keys and we thought we'd try to catch some ditch, tarpon, snook, or really anything for that matter. Give it a shot, see what we can find. I'm tossing the Power Prawn USA. Looks like you got the same thing. With the Fred color on a jig head. Yep, so we're uh, just right on the side of the road. This is Tamiami Trail, Highway 41. No fishing from the bridge, so we figured that means there's probably fish there. And yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna try to fish on the side of the road and uh, see if we can catch something. We'll keep you posted. Oh, looks like a big old gator across the way. Oh, yeah. So we get to the water and I'm super excited. This is a type of fishing that I've wanted to do for a very long time. And so I saw that the water was, was pretty dark, but it was clear. And so I was just looking for life, looking for any movement of any kind. And I wasn't really seeing anything. We, yes, we saw the gator, but that was really the only sign that we saw. So first stop was a bust and then started to move around. And it just, as I was looking around, I was just not seeing much action. And I was starting to get very dejected. This went from like the ultimate excitement of, of finally doing this type of fishing to just totally getting crushed and, and starting to, to wonder if we were just wasting our time. Uh, literally not seeing any life at all. This was about 30 minutes into it. Was about to uh, just say, hey, let's just go back and, uh, and cut our losses. But on this cast, I finally saw a sign of life and that's when things started to change. Oh, I just had some swirl. Oh, yeah, a little tarpon. Yeah, a little tarpon swirl in mine. They are? Yeah. So I did a straight retrieve. I was doing a straight retrieve with some little, uh, some just minor little bumps, but mostly straight. And it was down there swirling out. It was like a probably 14, 15 incher. So these little ones might be going after a little small bait. So I might. I might tear off the tail of this, turn it to a nub. So now we've got like a little two and a half inch nub, tore off a pretty good section of the, of the prong. Let's see if that gets them. Cause that was a very small one. Oh, there, oh man, I had them. First cast, first cast with the nub. See that swirl? That was actually a decent size one. Just straight retrieve. Huh? Yeah, just straight retrieve. No, no movements at all. And this is the little nub that he hit. Oh, there we go. I got him. Nice. Nice. See if we can keep him out of the trees. Oh, he's in the trees. <laughs> oh, he just got off. <laughs> that was a, oh, it, oh, he just hit it again. He just hit it again. Oh. Yeah, so this little thing right here is what they're hitting. That is crazy. Little tiny power prawn nub on the eighth ounce the eighth ounce uh, Haas football jig. So I was actually doing a, a slight jigging motion. Just a slight up and down is when he hit it. All right, there's a spot right there. Come on, hit it again, little guy. Oh, there we go, got him, got him. Nice. Told you that's the spot. Nice, Luke. All right, let's see if we can keep the hook in him this time. Land this guy, man. Coming at us. Whoa, there he is. <laughs> this is, whoa. Oh, Took perfectly right in the top of the mouth. That is awesome. What a cool fish. So we got a little landing over there, it looks like. Let's see how we can do this without falling on my face. Whoa, almost fell on my face. That's cool. Success. That's awesome. Small little micro tarpon. Barely hooked too. Can't believe that thing didn't shake. Nice little micro tarpon. Let him go back. All we had to do, give them what they want. Nice and small profile. That's sick. Power Prawn USA Junior, nub style. Who would have guessed? 
Yeah, the uh, bike slowed down, so we're gonna try across the road and see if we can get anything over there. Still using the old small nub. Coast is clear. This canal was very narrow. It got down to about five feet of water and I was seeing some garfish and it was looking pretty lively. And so I was just doing some slow bounces with this lure and here's where I got the first strike. Oh, tarpon just ate it, tarpon just ate it. Eat it again. There's two of them down there fighting over it. Eat it, oh man, it just missed it. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Let's see if we can get another one to eat. So here I can't really do a straight retrieve, so I'm having to jig it. Oh man, heartbreaker. So unfortunately, I, I must have spooked those tarpon or they just flat out swam away. I, I didn't see them again and I couldn't get them to strike. So I stayed there for a few more casts and then decided, let's go ahead and explore some more. Let's see if there's any more openings. And sure enough, there was one right around this mangrove tree. So I stayed here just for a little bit and about two casts later, I have another bout of excitement. This one was short lived. Oh, got him. Oh no, that's the bottom. Oh dang. Nice, I just unstagged myself the slingshot method. And in case you're not familiar with the slingshot method, it's basically when you get snagged and you pull the line really tight and then let go and let the stretch of the line actually shoot the lure backwards. It's surprisingly effective, especially if it's hard structure. It can save you lures. And in this case, it got me ready for this cool opportunity. Ooh, big snook. Got him, got him, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was incredible. Oh my gosh, that thing hammered it. Let's see if we can keep him out of the trees. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, come on, come on. Oh, that was incredible. Oh, stay out of the trees. Stay out of the trees. Oh my gosh, it's just 20 pound, 20 pound liter. I've already caught a tarpon on it. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, the fact that it's still on is a miracle. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I think I got him. I don't know where Matt is. Oh my gosh, slot snook. Oh, oh come on. Oh my gosh, I got him. See if I can even kneel down to get him. I'm, I can't believe this worked. Oh, I got him. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is at least a 30 inch snook. That is awesome. From the side of the road, Tam Amy Trail with the Power Prawn USA Nub Lure. That is incredible. That was incredible. I can't believe this line. This is just 20 pound mono. You can see it freighted up a whole lot, but little Haas, little small eighth ounce football jig. It keeps it just in a nice, a nice even uh, swim. And the, just the Power Prawn nub, Power Prawn USA nub, unbelievable. All right, gotta go back to the tackle bag. Gotta put a new leader on. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to risk my push my luck any further. So that's freighted up pretty bad. So I'm gonna do a longer leader and a fresh one, and we're gonna get back after it. All right. So just finished up getting a, a new fresh rig on. So new line that we went to 30 pound mono this time. Same little shrimp lure. Tore off the tail. Same size as the prior one. This one got beat up pretty bad. So this puppy is ready for action. Let's do this. I can't tell if that's a garfish or a snook. Oh, tarpon, tarpon. <laughs> oh my gosh, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's see if we can get them. We can keep them out of the trees, this is the hardest part. That was awesome. It actually wasn't the fish I was looking at either. So bummed to report that the GoPro batteries ran out right in the middle of the fight. Such a bummer and missed some really cool footage. The good news is Matt was close by and he had a camera to actually get the tarpon. Way to go, man. So much fun.
All right, the bite slowed down in the creek. So now, before we leave, I want to make a couple more casts up here. The first spot, see if they've settled down. Oh, there we got them. Nice. <laughs> nice. For whatever reason, going right by that little point, just gets them fired up. Whoa, nice jump. This is awesome. And I was just doing a straight retrieve and just a real slight twitch. There we are, another tarpon caught. Side of the road fishing. All right, we just pulled up spot number two, a little bridge right here. Matt and the Yak, time to make it happen. Try and get one. Luke's whooping me over here. <laughs> so this was the next area that looked good. We, uh, we parked on the side of the road, walked across, and uh, there was a little cove and a little creek that went under the street. So we stopped there to check out those things. And I'm glad we did because we ended up getting some fun action and really it was about maybe five casts in is when I got the first bite. Here it is. Oh, got him. Not sure what this is. Not very big, but it's something. The heck is that? Whoa. I'm not sure what this is. Any of you know what that is, leave a comment down below. Ooh, got Whoa. Yeah. Anybody knows what that is, let us know. Yeah, hit right next to the right next to the mangroves. So I walked down to fish that bridge and then Matt stayed in that little cove area and was getting into some fun action. This is all snowy traps. Matt's on. What is it? Oh, I got him. Oh, I got him. Right. What was it? It was either a, a, a tiny pea or a striped cichlid that was pretty cool. Man. Oh, wow. Nice. Seemed to be holding right there. Oh, there we are. Okay, look. So that's what you had too, yeah, huh? Same thing I had. Whoa, watch out. Yeah, that's, oh, I just had a hit. It's like, they're like, kind of remind me of like mangrove snapper a little bit. Check out the colors on this I know, thing. They're beautiful. That's a cool looking fish. We're rolling stuff. Ooh, that could be the ticket right there. Oh, got him. Oh, nice. ooh, ooh, ooh. Fish. That might be a tarpon. A tarpon? Looks like or, a tarpon. or a snook. Snook. Or this might be a mudfish. Catfish? I haven't caught a mudfish in a long time. That's what this looks like. Yeah, that's a mudfish. <laughs> Check out the side. That's a big old mudfish. <laughs> Bow fan. Yeah. Nice. Dude. That's crazy. These are all slimy jokers. I haven't oh, caught yeah, one of these slimy. in. I haven't caught one of these in years. Can't lip these guys. All right, so I'm back home from the trip. It turned out to be a blast. It was a roller coaster day. It was from the ultimate high of finally trying out this type of fishing. I've never done this before down in the Everglades to the ultimate crash when nothing was working. And then finally I saw a small sliver of hope when that tarpon came in and, and just slightly changed the lure size and it ended up being a, a great day. So, so really two core lessons that I wanted to highlight and then I'll talk about the, the tackle used during this trip. So lesson number one, was just the importance of don't be afraid to, to change your lures around, but, but, but I will say be strategic on focusing on retrieve first and then the size second. So I've, I was changing my retrieve. I finally got one to at least get a, a, a little small tarpon interested. Saw that it was a small tarpon. Instead of changing much lures around, I just ripped off the tail to get a smaller profile. And that turned out to be a, a great choice because they were all over it. And, and again, turned out to be a fantastic day. And so number two, I would say lesson number two is just the importance of getting to what we call the 90-10 zone. This is where at any given time, 90% of the feeding fish are gonna be in 10% of the water. And so whether you're fishing from shore like we were today, that applies, but also it does for by boat, kayak. And it's really the, the most important thing that we can do as anglers, because if we only do that properly, right? If we only can put ourselves in the best spots, then we can have some really good days, even if we're using little small chunks of plastic. Fortunately, this power prawn was designed to have just a good glide in the water, even without the tail. So it ended up working, but that, that was clearly not, uh, not what we thought when we were, uh, when we were building that. But, but again, if, if we only do this properly, we'll catch fish, right? And conversely, we can have the fanciest boat out there. We can have the best lures, the most expensive rods and reels. And if we can't put ourselves in the feeding zones, we're not gonna catch fish. It's that simple. And, and really we'll feel like fools when we have all that nice gear and we come home empty handed. So if you're struggling to consistently catch fish, make sure to take this new survey we put together called the 9010 recipe survey. This is totally free and what you'll get is a customized recipe 
for the waters that you're fishing. It's going to go through the wintertime recipe so you know exactly which types of areas are going to be holding the most fish. You can predict where the fish are going to be. So again, totally free of charge. If you want to check it out, saltstrong.com forward slash recipe. Okay, now for the tackle, I get this question all the time, so I thought I'd just go ahead and start including this at the end of every video. So I'll start with the most important first, and then we'll work down. So number one is the rod. Rod is always most important, and for this, I have this slot machine. This is a custom rod that we put together. It's seven foot six, it's a medium power, fast action rod, and it's just a really nice high modulus bling. This, is, this has ultimate feel. This is by far my favorite all-purpose inshore rod, and so I'll actually be using this probably for the most almost all videos going forward. I absolutely love it. And so second most important is the line, right? Distance is everything when we're fishing from shore, right? We can't reach everything. We can't move the boat or move the kayak. So we have to be able to cast far. And so I went with this light braid. This is a 10 pound braid. This is the J braid eight grand. Although I was fishing from shore near a bunch of structure, uh, it was worth it. It was worth getting that extra distance. That one little area that held all the tarpon required a really long cast. And if I had even 15 pound line, I, was, I would not have been able to reach them. So that worked out great and fortunately I didn't lose anything. As for the leader, I was using just regular mono. I started with 20 pound Andy mono and then I switched up to a 30 pound Andy mono once I saw that there were some legit fish to be caught. And then as far as the lure, right, this is the Power Prawn USA Junior. This is my favorite wintertime lure. This thing has been awesome, a fish normally, right, with a full lure. And then again, even, even performs well. Uh, nub style when we see that the, the bait fish are small and it was rigged on the Haas football jig. This is the eighth ounce jig head. And then finally we'll go to the reel. This is again in most cases the, the, le the least important for uh, inshore fishing. Uh, although this is a nice reel, this is the BGMQ. So a great reel. This is the 2500 which is the perfect size for an inshore setup like this where it's just 10 pound braid and a medium power rod. This 2500 size reel gets the job done. It has plenty of line capacity and power to, to handle really nice fish while still being super lightweight and just easy to use. So all this gear is on fishstrong.com and you Insider Club members, you actually get everything at 20% off except for the reels. We can no longer do that for reels, but if you're an Insider Club member and you buy a reel of any kind, we'll actually spool it for free. We'll give you the line and spool it on there totally for free as a thanks for being a valued member. So I'll put a link down below for everything that I talked about. And for you Insider Club members, make sure to check out the post-trip analysis video because not only do I show exactly where we were, but most importantly, I, I actually show the, the specific situation that every time we got into that type of spot, we got action. Just to help make, make your life a lot easier if you try to do a, a similar trip like this. And again, for you non-insiders, make sure to do that 90-10 survey. It is totally free of charge. And the feedback we've been getting from it has been absolutely amazing. And so we, we're confident it'll help you out as well. Thank you so much for your time and watching. Any questions at all, leave a comment down below. Love to hear from you. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.